Good afternoon. Um, question for you. Actually, before I, yes, okay, make sure which order I'm doing this in. Question for you. Are dating apps a shortcut? And in fact, are they the lazy approach? Because I'm going to ask you some questions and propose some solutions that might suggest a better approach. So before I jump into the whole topic and explain everything, let me use myself and then premise, explain the premise of this. That's what I'm trying to say. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. A bit of a false start there. I, <laughs> I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, helping women create balance in love, life and business. And I'm also a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, and a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is why I support women so much in my work and also what started these talks almost three years ago. I actually go and, had to go and dig up my first broadcast from December 2016 that started this whole thing in the first place. So this is episode, excuse me, Messages of the Masculine that started almost three years ago, and this is episode number 845. So I've done a bunch of these, and I'll tell you at the back end when you find the replays and the links, um, because you might be interested in checking them out. So today we're going to talk about the dating apps and whether or not they're an easy out or a shortcut because they're so in your reach, so to speak. Now, I'm also going to talk about this because right now with the launch of the Facebook dating aspect, focus, I don't know any, I, don't, I haven't used it myself, I don't have access to it yet, so they're probably keeping me out of it because I know I cause trouble. Uh, <laughs> but with all these dating opportunities out there, so prevalent and so easy to access, it's almost too easy. And I want to speak to that a bit more because we live in a very um, convenience, convenient, convenience oriented society. That's kind of the fact of life. And so when you use dating apps, it's kind of bringing everything close to hand. And the thing is, I was talking to somebody about this recently, about how less than 12, 15 years ago, we didn't have smartphones. We just had phones. <laughs> they weren't smart. They were just like, you could call and you could text. That's about it. And so with the, with the prevalence and the introduction of smartphones starting in basically with, the, with basically the iPhone in 2007, because Palm Pilots and Blackberries didn't do the job back then, but what happens with all the apps is the dating apps started showing up maybe six, seven years ago. I haven't tracked exactly. And nobody really thought about, okay, that's now putting everything that was kind of, you had to go out there to get it, is now right here in our hands. And for some people, it's gotten very convenient and unfortunately, too easy. And I want to speak to that a little bit. In days gone past, <laughs> in the olden days, so to speak, to get a date, if you didn't use a matchmaking service, which is still around, matchmaking service has been around for millennia, and maybe you started using the dating apps. Back in the day, I, I'm, doing, I'm going back quite a few years now, there was a thing called Great Expectations, which a friend of mine has now become a dating, is now a very well-placed matchmaker who started there. It used to be where you, and this is, this is sorry, let me, let me preface this. Besides your friend's referrals, blind dates, and meeting people at bars or at social engagements, if you want to find a date, the most organized dating system out there was the dating services like Great Expectations for example and they were pretty big and their whole thing was an, oh that oh ah okay sorry I just tied something together I was thinking about yesterday <laughs> my mind's doing strange things so dating, Great Expectations would have you record an interview or a uh, introduction on a I think it was a VHS tape back in the day and you'd pay membership so you could go in and watch other people's videotapes and that's one of my pet peeves about dating apps by the way I'll get to that in a second and so you basically would get a few people you choose and then you'd be introduced by somebody as a mediator or a, or a um, interface or an intermediary rather. So you would actually get to know that person and be introduced to them and you find each other before you actually meet. And it was kind of a, um, what's the word looking for? Oh, there's a word, it'll come back to me. Anyway, so that was the paradigm people worked in, which is all good, well and good. But with the dating apps, it's got, one, it's gotten easier and two, it's gotten less um, contextual. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. You have your dating app on your phone, and I have a few on mine, just to be transparent. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not immune to this, I've fallen into it myself. You have dating apps on your phone, and you basically click on it, and you, go, you peruse some recommended matches, which is the simplistic way that systems work to find somebody you're looking for based on very simplistic criteria that you put in. Age range, date range, location range, that sort of thing. It isn't really specific and it's also not very defined because it's really looking at a um, 
well, demographic, yeah, demographic, yes, more psychographic, demographic of society that fits your criteria. Very simplistic, works, great, done, no problem. Except there is a problem, that is. First of all, it's making it very simplistic, as I mentioned. So there's no real ultimate investment in it, which is why ghosting happens so much, as somebody else was posting earlier today about that. You're in a dating app and you start messaging back and forward and somebody disappears on you. It's like, what happened? You have no information. So it's kind of a challenging place on an energetic level because you're going to dive into this place and maybe you're going into it with your heart open, hoping to meet somebody. But every time somebody ghosts you or disappears or doesn't respond to you, you feel like getting bat beaten up and battered by that. That's one of the side effects. Secondly, I think I'm making a list. We'll see if that happens. Back in the day, as I mentioned, things like Great Expectations, they would record videotapes of you on camera so they could see what you look like and they interact with each other. I believe there's something missing from dating apps now, is we don't have some sort of video face. In fact, I would say that any dating app worth its salt, if it's going to be smart about it starting right now, would make your profile picture a video. Because dating pictures, sorry, profile pictures versus videos are hugely different. You know, they say that um, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, a video is worth a thousand photographs. Because when you are live on camera, somebody will get to know you much better than they can, which is a still frame. It's so different. Not only because you get to hear their voice, which is key, but you also get to know how they animate. And I've talked about this before as well, that there's definitely something about watching somebody be animated as in expressing and moving and, and presenting themselves, which tells so much more about who they are than when they're standing still. So the difference between picture and video is key to knowing if somebody you like or not. So first of all, my, my shout out to all the dating apps. If you want to, if you want to up your game, make your make the profile picture of the of each person's profile a video, not a picture. It will change everything for the better, I believe. Third, third, third thing. I think I'm just going through a list as they come up. Because of the convenience of dating apps and the extreme um, abundance of opportunities that you meet through dating apps, especially if your criteria are fairly basic and low, it's easy to fill up your social calendar if people say yes with people you can meet. For some people that's great, for some people like, oh crap, <laughs> as well. But the thing about it is, it's not so discerned, excuse me, I'm trying, to, trying to burp in the middle of that. It's not so discerned or defined. And I've said this in other talks again, I'm saying again here, is that until you really know what you want, the dating app and the swiping culture is missing something. And basically what it's missing is really getting a clear match of what you're looking for. Matches through the dating apps are coincidental at best. They're not intentionally defined usually by people saying what they want. Working with my clients as a sidebar is largely about one, helping them heal their wounds from the past relationships and looking for something they really want as a second step to focus where they want to go so they know what they're looking for. So when they go into the dating apps, because again, dating apps are okay, but it depends how you use them as a convenience to go meet somebody, to, to find someone, find a warm body to get next to. I'm not a big fan of that personally, but some people use it that way, which is good for them. But if you're looking for that long-term relationship and you're using a dating app as a um, convenient step, as a opportunity to swipe to check somebody out, personally, I feel that you're missing out because getting clear of what you want first is something most people don't do. They just jump in the dating app and they work. Hi, Gina. Nice to see you my broadcast. Um, thanks for the, the play, playful banter and the, and the love on... Um, on... Um, <laughs> on that broadcast that went out of my head. Okay, I'll come back. Anyway. Now, so, so distracting. Right? Back on track. Thank you for that distraction. <laughs> so, what I was attempting to say here... Katie, thank you. I, my mind was... I was going to Tina for some reason. I couldn't get Tina out of my head. That's all of the conversation. Katie's, yes, thank you. Katie's talk, that was fun. So getting back on point, <clears throat> when I'm coaching my clients, just to give you the sequence of events, working with them before we, after we have the first initial conversation, we commit to working together. Part of what happens is we start to unearth what it is that's in the way, what they want. And again, these are things that dating apps don't provide for you, just to be clear. By helping them get clear about what they want and also what's in the way of it, we start clearing the channels out so they can focus where they want to go. Part of the challenge with dating for me, well, not, excuse me, part of the challenge with dating for my clients, <laughs> and for me, I guess, 
is that dating is something that people do without any pre-planning. And this is one of the biggest um, reality checks about dating. For most people, if they're gonna go, let me let me use some analogies right here. If you're gonna go buy a house, you won't just go on the marketplace and choose based on the fact that the first one shows up is the one you're gonna go out with, or gonna go get, excuse me, you're gonna go buy. You'll do some research. You also ideally make a list of what you want in a house. If you're gonna buy a house, so yes, exactly, Amanda, it's good, to, it's good to be authentic. It's gotta be authentic. So the thing about, let me finish the analogies and I'll get back to the point, so you're jumping ahead of me. <laughs> Which is fine, I appreciate that. So, if you're looking to buy a house, you get, you're not gonna go buy, buy the first one out there. And before you start, ideally, you can have a plan of where you wanna live, like what location for school districts, you have, if you have kids. Um, what is your um, need, how many bedrooms do you need? What view do you want? All these different things before you even start. When you're gonna buy a car, for most people, some don't do this, but for most people, there's certain things to look for. Maybe it's, the repa maybe it's gonna be the payment schedule, or maybe it's gonna be the number of features, or, the, or the, how big the car is, or the color of the car even. Something, at least, to start with. But when it comes to dating, when you're on a dating app, you're just swiping through some criteria that are basically age range, date range, weight range, height range, location range. That's about it. It's very weak, which is why, as to speak to Amanda's point about having an authentic connection, is you've got to start with knowing what you want. I mean, it sounds so simplistic. I know it's simplistic to say it this way. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't care what you get. And I'm not a big fan of that. I know, and, and speak, okay, let me be transparent here myself. What I'm looking for in relationship, and I said I've got some dating apps on my phone, but one thing I'm looking for is partnership in life and love, as in, in work and love. So as much as I meet beautiful women through the dating apps and in real life as well, I do like going out meeting people socially and connecting people who I've met in real life, not just through the apps, is what is it they're up to? Meaning, what is it they're calling in life? What is their purpose, their direction, their vision? And frankly, if it's not something that overlaps or parallels my own, it isn't going to work. Partly because for most of my possible dates, the issues are kind of transparent to me. I'm going to say this, it's going to be blunt, it's going to be painful to say this, but because I've done all the work I've done and I've studied and become very aware of how people's actions are, it's easy to see people's stuff, their issues, their, their patterns, their blocks. It's a skill and it's a curse. <laughs> it's a skill in coaching, it's a curse in dating, just to be transparent. So I'm very clear that when I want to go out with somebody, they've got to be doing their own work, their personal growth work, they're evolving, they're healing, their transformational work. And that unfortunately does limit my dating pool, just to be transparent. So having said that. So getting back to you and everything else. Oh, you see, so with, yeah, see Gina, we have a lot of stuff to talk about because we, those of us who do work in different levels, and it depends, and everyone has their different choices, just to be clear, it transforms our perspective on dating. And it does mean for some of us, certainly myself, the time between dates can be quite, quite extended because we don't desire to go out with somebody who doesn't have common understanding, common language, common perspective on life. I just can't, just, just to be transparent. So what I'm attempting to say here is getting clear about what you want is a key. So again, the two things I want to talk about is what's in the way of your relationship and what do you really want in your relationship? Because those two things can be counter, counter um, or can be antagonistic to each other, let's say it that way. So you may know what you want and get clear in that vision of what you want to have. Yes, Amanda, that's the thing that as one of my teachers put it, yes, yeah, so you said the high the high vibe, the smaller the pool. And one of my um, one of my teachers put it this way is that you have to imagine that as a population, as human race, we're all at the base of this pyramid. And this is not good or bad or better and less, this is what happens. As we start to grow and do work and become more transformed, we, we climb the sides of this pyramid. So as we get higher and higher, the cross section of the pyramid gets narrower and narrower and narrower. So as we get towards the top, it's a much smaller cross section. What it means is that the people we can um, match to, the people we can connect with, even our friendship circles, will tend to get smaller and smaller because we don't relate to people beyond that circle. So it is true that the higher we vibrate, the smaller the, the pool. And it's not right or wrong, it's just about choices. We'll say, Gina, it limits us and you have no interest in a man who, has not, who is not high-minded and in personal development. Exactly, you're right. So knowing that first helps, but the thing is, you're on the dating apps, that stuff isn't usually obvious. So as I'm attempting to finish communicating, <laughs> I love this interaction though, is we've got to be clear up front what you want. But again, this is the piece I want to talk about, is that this, count, this, this um, 
antagonistic or, or challenging piece is you need to know what you want and you need to know what's in the way of it. Because you may say you want this sort of relationship that's over here, but if your past paradigm, your past programming, your past wiring takes you over a different path because of your upbringing, I talked about this one big time a couple of days ago, then you're gonna keep choosing that over this because what drives your subconscious is a much more powerful energy, your subconscious mind, than your conscious mind is by a large magnitude. So you've gotta be willing to look at your history and resolve what's in the way so that when you start creating a vision, it'll stick. It's a twofer, basically. You can, you, can't do, you, you can have a clear vision, but I guarantee you, without working on what's in the way, it won't come true. It's as simple as that. I've seen it proven more than once in my journey and with my clients and with friends I've watched do the same thing too, is that they say they want a certain thing, and I've had it happen recently with some friends, one of my friends, where she was saying she was clear about what she wanted, she, she knew what she wanted, was absolutely clear about it. And the guy she met was supposedly that for about three weeks, three months. But after that, that's when things went downhill, and it was the same experience she had in the last four relationships, and she couldn't figure out why. Now, if she chooses to work with me, I can help her with that, but without that help, she's gonna keep repeating the same cycle, kind of like the um, hamster wheel, going round and round, not changing the direction, or as is quoted by um, Albert Einstein, he's like, doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. If you keep doing the same thing again and again, and you're wondering why it's not changing, you're kind of being crazy. So it's good to be willing to be clear about what you want and be willing to face what's in the way so you can heal, transform, and release that so then what you want becomes your reality. That's why when I work with my clients, it takes a couple of months. We're not, I mean, I love to say I mean, I'm so good at this, I can fix you in two minutes. That would be a, um, a bad car salesman pitch. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> So, oh, was that before I just saw that one before I met it? Have you done or do you recommend a certain way to write down or get, get, get at what you want? Yes, okay, thank you for asking, Amanda. So, I have, an, I have an online course called Attract the Man You Want for the ladies. I guess gay men can do it too, but I think it's for the ladies. Where the first step is actually to get clear about what you don't want. Yes, the other way around. So, this, this I'll give you as a first step. It's, it's the first step of my, it's an eight module program, so I'm not gonna tell you the other seven modules. You have to get the program to find out. But the first module, basically, is you start with what you don't want. And usually you go by what you had in the past as your, as your um, resource list, because it starts there. So you start listing things that don't work. Um, they cheated on you, or they don't, they don't line up. So what would you say? You, you put Tony Robbins' date with destiny as where he graduated from. It's true, what do you think? Um, see, this is the thing, Gina. Hang on, Gina, hold on that thought, come back to you. Let me finish with Amanda's point. So you start with what you don't want. You make a list. What you then do is when you make the list, use one side of the paper, like half the sheet. On the other side, when you finish that list, or as much of the list as you can come up with, you start writing the positive inverse, reverse of that. So if they always, well, if they were never reliable, then you want somebody who's dependable. If they were always cheating on you, someone who's loyal. If it's somebody who drank a lot, someone who's sober, whatever that is. So you create a list of those positive things, and that becomes the starting point for your intention list of what you want to have. So that's a freebie from me to you, Amanda, so you can play with that. So having clarity about what didn't work first as a springboard to create what you do want, so that starts the flip to focus where you want to go. There's a whole bunch of stuff beyond that I talk about with, with um, um, vision boards and living visions and other stuff too, be a my program for that. So if I, I'll just put a link in the comments if you can check it out later on at the back end when I sign off. So Gina, um, putting down what you've graduated from can be useful, yes, but I'm gonna put a caveat on that personally. Um, I've known Tony Robbins for 30 years. Um, back when he started, I actually studied with John Grinder, who's one of his teachers back at the beginning. I didn't, I didn't pursue the NLP path, but I know Tony's path. And Tony's a major teacher, massive teacher, but the challenge is that he's not the only one. And I'm saying a challenge because sometimes we get very myopic, and because I, I was many years ago when I started studying with different teachers. I'm now, frankly, grateful that I've been immersed with enough different teachers to know there's no one teacher that is the one you want to listen to necessarily, and you don't want to just brand yourself with that. I could put about 10 teachers down I've, list, I've studied with, and somebody may have had two or three of those, but nobody, I believe, has done all of those 10 the same as I have because I've taken a very circuitous path. For example, I know, for example, people who've done work with the Hoffman Institute is also powerful. It's a transformational journey. If you haven't heard of Hoffman Institute, check it out. It's an incredible healing, transformational experience, which I haven't done. I've got friends of mine who've done it. And when they've done it, their um, open-heartedness and humanity is so much more rich and inviting and appreciative, I can fall in love with those people. Because, and they're friends of mine, so I love them dearly. So it's not about what you've studied, it's about what you've gained from the studies. That's my message, really, anything else. So if you've gone through Tony Robbins' work, great. 
What has changed your life? What has happened to you that you've grown into? You know? So Amanda, someone someone new you have joined is Mark Groves, Smaller Space Canadian. I don't know Mark Groves personally. I study out of speaking of Canada. I'm a passionate devotee of Warrior Sages trainings out of Vancouver, which is um, Satya and Suzanne Raja, dear friends, great teachers, love them dearly, and they're not my only teachers. So it is important, yeah, so Gina, that's the thing, you have many teachers as well. So putting Tony Robbins on there can be great, but if people start looking at it going, that's all you're focused on, they might avoid you, you don't know. So it's important to list maybe a more general list, but knowing that you can meet somebody who's done different teachings that are so aligned to what you've studied, bingo. I've studied with a different teacher who's one of Tony Robbins' best salespeople. Um, she's up in Oregon now, and she was an amazing teacher, but she was very spiritually based. Uh, her name's Nyoka. She's a powerful NLP master teacher as well. So there's always different people to play with. And so it's finding what works for you, yes, and it's finding a way of communicating that so people who meet you see if you're on the same page. I've got a, I've got a master's degree in spiritual psychology. Only two and a half thousand people have ever done that program. That's a small dating pool, and they're not people on dating anyway. So, but I bring to the table a set of skills that are rare, but there are different skills that complement that. So finding someone who matches with you and can understand where you come from, we can take ownership. The big thing I took away from University of Santa Monica, amongst other things, was real responsibility for who I am and understanding about how projections don't work. That's two of the biggest, and forgiveness too. There's a bunch of skills. But those are big pieces, which you can learn other places too. So it's important to find teachings that are matching yours with somebody you've been through. So, so it's true, yes, Amanda was saying it. You agree there are individuals who may have an aversion to a few people. You agree there are individuals who may have an aversion to a, to a few people. I'm not sure what you meant, what that was in correspondence to, Amanda, so maybe you can clarify that. Um, but, and just to be transparent, Tony Robbins isn't one of my teachers. I've, I've, met, I've met him, I've crossed paths with some of his, his teachers as well, and he's just not one of mine. That's just the choice I've made. Um, but I am very clear that, if he, that, that when you get value from a teacher, stick with it until you no longer do. I have been around some teachers, no names mentioned, who were, um, I'll just say inauthentic. That's the that's nicest way to put it. And I walked away from them. So there are many teachers out there, so pick the ones that work for you and trust your own intuition with that too. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation for another time. What I'm attempting to finish saying here is first of all, get clear about what you want in a relationship. <laughs> that's where I started from. And also be willing to face what's in the way of that. So those two things are primarily the focus. I do talk about how it's important to love yourself too. That's one of my core. Um, basically, if you ever go to my website and watch my very old and dated uh, three video series, you can go on my website and opt in for that if you want to. Um, the landing is on my name, barryselby.com. There's a landing page there and there's three videos. One talks about, and I'm getting what they're about. One of those is about um, what it is that you want. One is about clearing out the past and making peace with it. And the third one is to really come in love with yourself. Exactly, Gina, you must love yourself first. So, um, oh yeah, exactly. yes, man, Amanda, yeah, and seeing specific mentors or teachers, some people are averse to that. So yes, that's why it's always good. Some t I think it's good to be more general and more about who you've become, what you've learned, and what you're looking for in partnership, not being a graduate of certain programs. Um, hang on, I went two different directions there. Let me hold on to that one in a second. So my three video series is that's part of the invitation and then it's, then it's the invitation to sit down and talk with me. So again, I'll put a link in the comments for my um, conversation with a consult with me so you can reach out for that. Secondly, I'll put a link in the comments for my um, attract the man you want because Amanda might give some, some input for that. And thirdly, I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation. And by the way, just to finish up what you said, um, what were you saying there, uh, about, oh yes, setting, setting what you want. So Amanda, to answer that, that, that point, The thing I'm passionate about is, being, is owning what you have studied. Oh, oh this, is, this is the piece that was in there. I knew it was in there. So for, for ladies, for this point, I want to make this true too. I've gone through a lot of programs over the years. Lots of courses, great teachers, different people along the way. I know friends of mine and people I've known gone through the same teachings but didn't take to heart what they learned. So there are people who are graduates of various courses and programs but haven't actually incorporated the work into their lives, into the way they live, they're not, they're not grown, they're not evolved. Even in my master's program, there are people like that. So my, my, um, it, that's another reason why I say, looking for somebody who's done that program in particular, whatever that program is, may or may not be perfect. So just be aware of that. It's more about who are they, who have they, who've they become, what do they express, what is their emotional maturity, what is their mental clarity, what is their heart space like? Start with those three things and you have a much better chance of finding real love.
actually that's a pretty good start. Unfortunately, none of the dating apps show those. <laughs> so you've got to have a conversation. So just to be clear, um, I think I've given you about 17 different things to play with today. I hope this has made some sense to you. Um, but I think since you asked, since, since you asked Gina and well, actually no, it wasn't you asked, it was uh, Amanda that asked, but I will put links in the comments. So there's going to be, it's like a chessboard. Yeah, right. It is. Um, thanks for all the input. I appreciate the love and support. I will put some links in the comments for you to play with. So one, definitely put a link in the comments so you can reach out and have a chat with me, my gift to you. Thank you, Amanda. I'm glad you liked it. So again, so conversation with me if you want one of those. It's a complimentary chat, a gift. I will put my Attract the Man You Want program in there because that speaks to what you're asking about, Amanda. And I'll also put a link in the comments to my Self Love Meditation. It's my voice guiding you with two meditations and a guidebook that will just set up a place for you to start loving yourself with a little mirror exercise that will transform your life. And if, say, if you want to go to my website and check out the free video series, it's a three part video series. As I said it's old. I look a little different there, I think, because it was about eight years ago. Yeah, I, I lost some weight since then. Um, anyway, you can check those out if you want. <laughs> it's on my website. And um, I think that's it. So, quick reminders, replays, by the way. I thank you, but again, thanks for all the comments and love. I appreciate that. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. The, yes, the emotional, emotional maturity. Besides emotional maturity, well, emotion, um, it is EQ, yes, that's the, ter that's, the, that's the shorthand term. But it's emotional, it's also emotional mastery as well. There's a, there's a subtle difference. Emotional mastery is the ability to handle your emotions in a way that is authentic and aligned. And emotional maturity is you don't basically, um, you're, not, you're not at the mercy of your emotions, you have mastery over them. That's the difference. So emotional maturity, um, mental clarity, clarity, and ability to articulate and communicate, um, understanding of how beliefs and judgments work, open-heartedness, willingness to forgive, um, I'm, I can make a whole list of all these things. These are ones you can start with. You can build your own list from those to start with, so that's a good starting point. Um, replays, I want to make sure I get that to you. So again, personal page, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right on my personal page on f Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Although I've only discovered recently, Facebook's not being nice. It's not saving my old ones. It's only got about 200 out there. Yeah, only 200. So YouTube is a safe place to get them. Oh, my business page is Barry Selby, the author. You can follow me there, so please like my page. But the replays, if you want to see all of them, I have them all on my YouTube channel because I did learn the lesson early on to save them to my computer and put them onto YouTube because you can't trust Facebook, sorry. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Also, all my social media is Barry Selby. You're welcome, Gina. Glad to help. If you want to talk, let me know because I can probably offer some other key little um, insights and help that will give you some clarity as well. Um, YouTube channel is Barry Selby, which is, so please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. And all of my archives from this one all the way back to number one, which is the end of 2016, are all there. Um, it's funny, I looked at the first one because a friend of mine was talking about it recently and I was going, wow, look, I, my whole presentation is different then. I said, it, I said then in my first broadcast that this might become a series. <laughs> I had no idea where I was going to end up with 840 something of these. So, ah, the innocence of younger days. So anyway, I thank you for watching and appreciate being here. I'll go back and respond to the comments that I missed when I sign off. If you want to reach out for support and help, please let me know. Um, you can reach out on my social media and or, and wow. Thank you, Amanda, for clicking all these names. I appreciate all the extra people you've, t you've tied into this talk. Thank you. That's, that's awesome. Um, so before you publish your live, there is an opportunity to save before you publish and then you save your videos to your computer as well. Well, actually what I do, Amanda, is I actually wait till the, because I, I believe this works. What I actually do is I do set, I do um, upload in HD to my computer, but I, I'm doing it from my phone, and I don't want to clutter up, fill up my phone with my videos. So what I do is I upload to my computer, and when it's there, then I download to my computer from from Facebook, and it's usually high resolution. So it's a bit bit. Although I hope it is. If it's not, when I get my new phone, it will be high resolution <laughs> HD. So anyway, so yes, I do understand that, but I save it to my computer first. I save it to you to Facebook first, then down to my computer, then up to YouTube because on my desktop it's easier to work on than my phone. So thank you for that tip, Amanda. I understand exactly. I did try that, and I was like, oh, it's going to fill up my phone too quickly because that's a lot of videos. So um, again, you know where the replays are. There'll be some links in the comments. Please reach out if you want support. I hope it's been of value to you. And again, I'll respond, in the comment. I'll respond to the comments when I sign off. And if you have any thoughts on the replays when you watch it, please leave them below, and I'll respond later on as well. 
I'm spent. I think that's good enough talk. I appreciate you being with me as always. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the input. Love you ladies. I appreciate that a lot. And I'll back in tomorrow with another topic. That'll be episode 846. I have no idea what it'll be yet. I'm sure something will come to me as it always does. So please take care of yourself and check out my comment, my, my links in the comments that I'll put in after I sign off because they will help you change your life and attract what you want in love and relationships. And I know it will. So with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.